Welcome back to the Jones Zones, people, and today I'm going to be getting into a few topics, namely archaeology, anthropology, and bibliology, and some of the limitations that each of these areas of studies presents. Okay, so let's start with archaeology, which is the scientific study of human activity through the recovery and analysis of material culture. Okay, we can roll with that. All right, so all this means is that archaeologists are pretty good at ascertaining the facts of a particular culture and a people by discovering evidence. That key word is evidence, people. And this evidence comes in the form of artifacts, architecture, biofacts, or ecofacts, sites, and cultural landscapes, which I like because, you know, we have a little bit of geology going on there. Now, in the event that we might have had a culture that existed on lands that are no longer accessible to us, then this is where archaeology and anthropology are going to encounter their limitations as to what they might find, unfortunately. And this is exactly why archaeologists and anthropologists have done such an amazing job in uncovering the sites of Gobekli Tepe, Karaan Tepe, and all the other Tepes, which supposedly date back as early as to about 9,500 BCE, give or take. Now, despite all of this being an amazing discovery and an achievement for archaeology and anthropologists, there are still some disagreements between prehistorians on whether or not Gobekli Tepe was actually a place of permanent inhabitancy or just a religious site that would have been temporarily occupied by nomadic hunter-gatherers. Now, personally, I think that there's a truth that can integrate both of those scenarios. But first, we'll have to look at the isotopic data, which I think is off by a few centuries or so uh, in this case. And I'm not saying that isotopic analysis doesn't have its uses, but I don't think it's 100% accurate. And, uh, you know, I think that it could, it could be off by hundreds to thousands of years, depending on how far back we're dating something. I mean, this is a structure that's been around for thousands of years, maybe less, maybe more. And throughout that time, this structure has likely seen many rainy seasons, silically and linearly, as well as sandstorms, earthquakes, and the various solar flare events. And uh, despite all of that, you know, we're supposed to just go along with the notion that these elemental ratios are degrading consistently regardless of all the other aforementioned processes? Hmm. I don't know about that one. I, I guess it comes down to one question. Can environmental factors interfere with isotopic signatures? And if so, then that means that this scientific method for dating things is subject error. Um, but for now, I'll just assume it is because I honestly believe that you can't know the exact age of a particular structure unless you're dealing with the actual material substance of that structure at that specific point in time. And if any of you academic people out there disagree, you're welcome to contact me at the email address in the description section below. Now, there's just another thing or two I'd like to cover before I go, and that's the geological framework that I'm using to outline this specific point in prehistory that takes place at about 3000 BCE or 15,000 BP. And I'm being honest, I'm trying to work in cohesion with the information in the Bible, because as you know, the Bible does have geography in it, ancient geography, and uh, ask, uh, anthropologists, archaeologists, they actually rely on the Bible as a, as a source when they're moving forward on their projects. So I'm, I'm doing the same thing. Now, lastly, what I'd like to say to the scientists, the, you know, the archaeologists, the anthropologists, and the geologists that are very serious about looking into prehistoric lost civilizations is that you tend to do very well when it comes to unearthing cultures and people who live under the lands that we have access to. But now, let us also try to search under lands we no longer live on, like under the Northern Sea and under the Baltic Sea, Black Sea, and far in the East. Let's see what you'll find under the seas of what was once Sundaland, okay? the uh, sea that surrounds uh, Indonesia. Okay, let's, let's see what's going on down there. In there, down there, under there, okay? And I'm not talking about just scouring the ocean floor for stuff. No, I'm not talking about do, do that, yeah. What I mean is that, you know, you guys are going to need engineers 
designing specialized archaeological equipment, you know, new types of drills, you know, sensors and things like that, you know, that can carefully dissect the ocean floor for remnants of ancient civilizations and what have you. Because frankly, I feel that it is here where we should be investing our money. It is here on planet Earth, our home that we all share, where research funds should be going. Not trips to Mars or the moon for that matter. Thanks for watching.